Hello, everyone. My name is Renee Williams Hockaday, and I am the communications program manager for the DAISY project. Um, welcome to the What DAISY Do Can Do For You webinar. Uh, during the webinar, participants will be muted. Um, we will record the webinar and post it on the DAISY website for future reference. Um, feel free to um, put questions in the chat, and we will have a Q&A at the mm -hmm. end of the presentation. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and um, introduce our program officers um, from the Department of Education, um, Meredith Michelli and Amy Bay. And if they'd like to say a few words. There we go. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. yes. Excellent, okay. Hello everyone, I'm Meredith Michelli from the Research to Practice Division in OSEP, and I am one of the project officers for DAISY. Amy Bay, um, as Renee mentioned, is my co-project officer. And we'd like to thank you for joining on today's webinar to hear about the kinds of TA supports and opportunities DAISY will be able to provide under this new grant. Um, we've come a long way since the first DAISY was originally funded in 2012. Collectively, uh, we've learned from our past experiences, we've refined our focus, um, we've changed our approach to address challenges and meet the needs of Part C and 619 programs in the reporting and, and use of IDA data, as well as linking those data to other um, state data systems. Under this round of funding, we've asked DAISY to really focus on the use of the Part C and 619 data for program improvement and compliance accountability, as well as addressing some of the challenges that states face regarding the collecting, reporting, analyzing, and using high quality IDA data, um, particularly staff turnover um, and, and data leadership. Uh, when developing the priority for this center, um, we recognize states need to establish and implement effective early childhood data management and data system integration policies and pro procedures to support program impro improvement, compliance accountability, um, and federal and public reporting. Uh, we believe that the improved policies and procedures will allow states to link or integrate their child level data in Part C data systems, uh, the preschool 619 data systems, uh, other early learning program data systems, as well as those statewide longitudinal. So the linking both vertically um, and horizontal, uh, uh, longitudinally, yes, <laughs> and, um, and horizontally. <laughs> Building robust early childhood integrated data systems that include Part C and Part B preschool uh, special ed data um, can be used to respond to critical policy questions that will facilitate program improvement and improve compliance accountability for those programs at the state level. This level of integration will help states' efforts to implement data-driven decision-making for program improvement. Um, and will ensure that states are reporting and using high quality IDA data. Early childhood integrated data systems could allow states to identify what works best and improvement outcomes, uh, to improve outcomes for young children in the states. Um, this could be things like um, an early childhood integrated data system could allow a state to determine which characteristics of services are related to better outcomes for children and families, or the relationship between early childhood settings and early childhood outcomes. Um, an early childhood integrated data system that includes data from our, um, across various early learning programs could also provide data that informs the, uh, those efforts to improve child find activities in the state. Um, Early childhood data systems can be used to help states determine other early, um, early learning programs that young children with disabilities and their families are participating in and allow states to maximize the efficiency and operations of the early, uh, early intervention or the early childhood special ed programs um, while maintaining or improving outcomes. 
So you all are required to collect a lot of data and you all need a lot of data to make decisions regarding these programs, the Part C and 619 programs, and these integrated or linked early childhood data systems, as well as strong data management and data leadership can lead to the efficiencies in collecting, reporting, analyzing, and using high quality IDA data. And Daisy's here to help you build that capacity to accomplish these things. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Daisy, and thank you. Thank you, Merida. So we'll move on um, and talk about um, who we are and what we do. And Daisy's co-director, uh, Kathy Hebler, will um, talk about that. Thanks, Renee, and, and thanks, Meredith, and thanks, um, Amy, for, for being um, Amy and Meredith for being with us today. Um, we are really excited um, to be here with you. I think Meredith gave you a pretty good sense of what we are about. Uh, the DAISY Center is about early childhood data um, and particularly around the use of the data and the use of the data for multiple purposes, including program improvement and compliance accountability. And to do that, um, we know you have to have that good, strong data infrastructure. And data infrastructure is not just the data system itself, it's also your manuals, your policies, your procedures, your data governance. Um, and we know from five, actually seven years of working with you on, on DAISY One that, that states are in various, um, various places with regard to their data infrastructure, particularly around that linking issue. Um, that Meredith talked about. Our message to you is we are here to help you with all of that, to, to build that strong infrastructure, to develop the leaders. The other thing we know is that the infrastructure is not enough. This is a human-centered activity. We need lots of folks who understand, and that's all of you on this call, um, who understand the value of data, who know how to work with data, who know how to engage your stakeholders around data, and that's what we're here, we're here to help you with. Um, I am so thrilled to, to see, um, when I saw the, the participants in the registration list, to see um, some familiar names of people that we've been working with for many years, and we are glad to, to still be able to be working with you. Um, and to see new names. Um, and for the new folks, um, some of you who may not even have known about Daisy One, we welcome you. Um, and we look forward to getting to know you and your state better um, and, and to working with you too. Um, just to give you a sense, we are around until 2023. So if you have a new activity like linking, um, or thinking, we know a lot, of, an amazingly high percentage of states are thinking about uh, new data systems in the next two years. That's what we're here to help you with. So now's a good time um, to get started because we know it's a long undertaking. So, um, so we'll be around for a while to help you with that. Um, just sort of for the, the good of the order, we do talk about Daisy 1 and Daisy 2 right now to, to, to distinguish some of our earlier activities that are still going on. We're not going to call the center DAISY 2. The center <laughs> is DAISY, um, but for right now, we just wanted to, to make the distinction as, as we move forward. We also thought you might like to know some of the things we've been working on since we were funded. We have, um, we've been doing ongoing TA, states have initiated new TA. You're going to hear about some of the things um, that we've been working on. We've been doing um, APR and SPP reviews for states. We've been doing a lot of COVID work um, with ECTA. We hope all of you have been to the ECTA website. Um, if you haven't around COVID and COVID issues, that website continues to grow every day. Um, so please do go there. Uh, right now we are working with 27 states and territories around TA. Um, and we look forward to working with more of you. You're gonna hear um, a little more um, in some of the coming slides about some of the specific activities we are doing and that we have planned for you. One message I just can't reiterate enough is please don't be worried about what TA center to reach out to for help. All of the, um, the TA centers talk to one another. You cannot come in the wrong door. 
if you call a TA center and that is not their area of responsibility, they know what all the rest of us do and will refer you to the right one. So please don't, we're all things data, um, but if you have any hesitation at all, just call, call anybody any of the TA centers and they'll get you to where you need to be. Okay, next slide, please. I wanna um, introduce our, our DAISY leadership team. Uh, Don and I are the co-directors and you will hear from Don in just a minute. Uh, Cornelia is our director, dir deputy director of evaluation, Cornelia Taylor. Grace Pelly, and you're gonna hear from both of them. Grace Pelly is our deputy director of technical assistance. Denise Mazzi is our terrific project manager who keeps all of us rolling along. And you've already met Renee Hockaday, who is um, our new communications uh, program manager, and we are thrilled to have Renee on board. So that is the DAISY leadership team. Next slide, okay. I wanna um, let you know that, that DAISY is a, collaborative organ is a collaborative effort of many organizations. I'm not gonna talk about them today. Uh, when you get the slides, each of those logos is a live link if you wanna know about any of the, the organizations. And the link at the bottom takes you to a page um, on our website where you can also get to each of these organizations. Uh, I will point out that Pyre in the lower left-hand corner. Um, they are our external evaluators. All the other organizations play some role in, in the provision of technical assistance. Um, so that's, that is our team. With that, I'm so, going to introduce uh, Donna Spiker and turn it over to Donna. Hello, everyone. This is Donna Spiker. I'm, as you heard, co-director with Kathy. And so we're going to, Renee and I are going to try doing a few polls here. <laughs> and uh, you've now met the DAISY Leadership Group. And let's, let's first get a sense of who's here. So who all is out there in Zoom land? Um, so we'll pull up a poll here and uh, tell us your role. And then we'll see who's out there. So click on your role and hit submit. All right. We How are we about, doing there, Renee? We have about 68 of the 87 participants voting so far. Okay. No, oh, that's about 80%. Yeah. yeah, let's see how you let's see how you're doing. We know the elementary kids are doing this at school. <laughs> They're in their Zoom education rooms. <laughs> yeah, I think we've we've okay. Gotten, we so good? Let me share the results. Yeah, let's see. Let's see who's there. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got our coordinators, our C in 619. We've got uh, 25% the data managers and our TA, a lot of our TA providers and other TA providers we know are um, a lot of states have other folks who work with them on their data. Um, and I see we have other state staff, uh, 10%. So we've got a nice mix of um, people out there, okay. So let's close this one. Let's get a little sense of, so the next one is to get us a sense of in terms of how our depth for our next questions, like um, how familiar are you with um, the DAISY Center from, with DAISY? Because we know that some of you are new and some have been here for a while. So Renee, let's see what we got on that one. So. So just mark regularly, are you very familiar, somewhat familiar, not very familiar? And my TA providers out there, you better be very familiar. <laughs> See what our rest of our folks are.
Yeah, I think we're we're close. Okay, here. how are we doing? Let's see yeah. our responses there. Yeah, so I will share the results. Okay, so so the, the majority are have some familiarity, but 10% not very familiar. And you're gonna learn about um, more of the ways that you can become familiar and the somewhat familiars become very familiar. So let's move on. I want to, so the next few, before we go to our, um, where we're going with um, Daisy 2, um, what, first we'd like to say, like we, we, we really enjoyed and, and working with everybody on Daisy 1, and we think it was pretty successful in a lot of ways. We had some evaluations at the end, and we had some independent evaluation data, but you can see here, um, what's missing, there's a little thing missing over here, hit the, the time over here, that over 12,000 hours of individual TA to states and territories over that seven year period. And you can see from the, from the three bars here that we, in part C, we, we worked with all 50 states and territories, and then in 619, 49 of them. And this is individual work, at least some individual work throughout that seven years. And then in a minute, you're gonna hear about cohorts. One of the ways that we worked with states, and we learned a lot where cohorts of states working on a similar idea, um, a similar topic, and we had this with 37 different kinds of services across different states. We intended to use this again. We know that states learn a lot from each other and that states are in different places. And no matter what place you're in, these cohorts of states on a specific topic, um, we found were really effective and it states really made good progress on the topics that we worked on. So you'll hear a little bit more about what we're thinking about in the future. And then our next slide, oh, there's our hours, 22,000 hours. And this is, um, at the end of DAISY, the, those of you who remember, um, we had a, an independent survey that we did and we collected information and what we'll say a little bit more about that later. But there, there were a lot of comments that people wrote in, and, and we were pleased and used these in the way we're thinking about our next round. That um, Here's some quotes. You can read them. That our state has been transforming the relationship that local systems have with their data. And going from thinking more, less, more about evaluative questions, asking questions, and using the data to really look at local program improvement. And this was something that evolved over that period of time. And then um, the, the, con the big concept that we've all been working towards is using data, having a deeper understanding of data and using data for decision making and also helping others, lots of different stakeholders in your states understand and use data. And so we're gonna, you're gonna see these themes emerge in the next um, in the next work we're doing. And I'm gonna now turn it over to Grace Kelly, who's gonna tell you about some of the things we're gonna be doing. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to be with you on this call. Um, we, we have a couple of slides that we'll be talking about the TA that we'll be providing. So we can help you with many types of data. And we know that states use their data to comply with the IDEA federal reporting requirements, but also to answer important program and policy questions. Um, we will continue to provide individual TA, and as Donna said, also an emphasis on the cross-state TA opportunities as well, through our cohort work, through um, coffee talks, webinars, um, hosting conversations among states around particular is issues that they're interested in. As you guys know, um, who were involved with this in the past, through DAISY when we were able to develop um, calculators and self-assessments and, and tools for data analysis and collection and reporting um, and toolkits that help you think about these various types of data. And we'll continue to do that 
and used all of that information from DAISY One um, in, in providing more intensive and targeted TA this round for your data needs. Um, these are just some of the ideas of the ways that we've helped states. And if you don't see your data need here, just ask and we'll be able to support you. As you all know, we're supporting Part C and 619. And in 619 in particular, we'll be focused on the child outcomes, indicator seven, and transition, indicator 12. Other um, 619 data needs can be addressed through IDC. They are, um, we will continue to partner with them in addressing the 619 needs. Additionally, um, we can help you build state capacity Next slide, yeah. We can help you build your capacity um, <clears throat> and around these topics. And we know that you may need assistance in one or more of these topics. Um, these are general topics that help tell the story of your data. We can help build this capacity through data system design, um, ensuring that you have high quality data to use for multiple purposes. As um, Meredith mentioned at the start of the call and as we've been talking about accountability, data allows us to look at the accountability of our programs and that's important. Um, having that data help us determine the quality and the results of our systems and our services. We also wanna have good data for program improvement and using that data to describe the um, services that we deliver but also look at the results that we're achieving through those, um, the programs and what the data tells us. We also use that data for program um, operations. So it's having that data day to day for the operations of the program and helping to make decisions. We also wanna focus on data, next slide, data literacy or data leadership, sorry. So we are all data leaders. So whatever position we have or where we are in our program, it's important that we have data for data-informed decision-making. So we wanna focus on building the knowledge and skills of state coordinators and other staff who are involved. We wanna support data leaders in building the capacity of stakeholders to understand and work with the data and build a culture of data use. And some of the ways that we're planning to do that um, in our ongoing work are to um, continue to work with Navigate, which is the um, initiative focused on new Part C and 619 coordinators. We are also developing some um, support for date, new data Part C data managers as they come into their positions. Um, we'll be collaborating with our partners through ITCA, NASD, ECPC, ECTA, and NCPMI all acronyms that we can go into later, but we are hoping and planning to work with them um, in their work to ensure that we have strong data leaders and an understanding of the, how, how those um, efforts can use data in their work. Um, we also wanna talk about, and this is the fun part, we wanna talk about our offerings and what we have coming up to support your work. On the next slide. Yeah, so this is work that we currently have going on. As Kathy mentioned, we're, we're currently doing individualized state, individualized TA with 28 states and um, hope to work with all the states and territories over the next five years. But these are our current offerings around the learning communities. Um, it's new and I hope many of you are aware of this, the Part C data managers community. Um, we will continue with the Child Outcome Summary Learning Community, the Family Outcomes Data Community Practice, the TS Gold Learning Community, and the BDI Users Groups. Many of you are involved in one or more of those um, learning communities now. We will be adding additional learning communities as we move forward. Um, one of the things that you'll see after this call today is um, if you'll go to our website, there will be a sign up um, if you want to sign up for one of these learning communities today. If you're already involved in one of the communities, you will not need to sign up again. Only if you're new and wanting to join one of these communities, you'll be able to find more about each of these and have the ability to sign up. Um, 
We partner with ECTA on most of these. So if you're involved with ECTA, you will see this information on their website as well. And many of you may know that we have two upcoming um, cross-state cohorts that will be launched um, this summer, end of the month, beginning of next month, one related to family outcomes and one related to child outcomes focused on 619. There will be more cohorts to come. Additionally, um, we have some offerings for our Part C data managers on the next slide. Um, so this is new, I mentioned this earlier, but we're gonna provide ongoing TA and peer-to-peer -peer learning. Um, many of the Part C data managers are signed up already. We encourage you to sign up if you're interested in being a part of those conversations and we'll have ongoing support. Um, we also are offering the Part C data manager orientation. So this will provide new Part C data managers with an overview of um, the IDA data collection reporting requirements, 618 and EMAP, so submissions. Um, just earlier, we were talking about how APR season is coming up again. Um, so the data collection and analysis for that. So you'll be able to sign up for those resources as well on the webpage after this call. I want to go on and talk about the resources that are under development. So we have lots of resources that have been developed and some that those are working on that we're working on now um, in response to what we know that your state needs are. Um, we have data disruption and recovery resources. This is a, a group that we have that is specifically looking at the ongoing um, COVID re response to COVID and uh, looking at the disruption that that has occurred in your state data systems and being responsive and supportive of that. So if you have particular needs or discussions that you want to have or support, please reach out to us around that. We're also partnering with um, ECTA, as many of you know, they have a website with resources and we continue to have ongoing conversations and looking how we can quickly respond to and support states as they work through this current crisis. Um, we have the Part C Data Quick Reference Guide, which will, is posted on the website either today or the next day or two that provides resources related, um, particularly for Part C data managers um, and where they can get particular resources to do their jobs. We'll have the data linking toolkit, as Meredith pointed out. We're very interested in um, linking data, particularly C and B data, but also how our data can be linked with the broader early childhood data um, so that states have good information to support young children. Um, we have coming out as a partner with ECTA uh, a document soon, any day now, we hear that right, um, improving results and compliance, a six step inquiry cycle. So really building in the results piece of the RDA work into the compliance work um, and a step-by-step -step guide for doing that. We're working on revising the um, framework, the DAISY data system framework, um, streamlining that, taking the lessons we've learned over the last several years and um, streamlining that document to be more concise. Um, the State of the States reports will be coming out. Um, for those of you who are 619, you may be aware of the child find self-assessment that was developed for Part C. We're also working on that for 619 and that will be available in the next year. We'll also have the, um, it's target setting, resetting targets. We'll have the target setting guidance document we have a lot of other resources under development, particularly related to our highest requests um, for TA come in generally around accountability, around the ESSIP um, and the APR. So we are developing resources around that, um, looking at working sessions with states around ESSIP evaluation, um, so lots of other resources that are under development that you'll see coming up. On the next slide, we um, are talking, we want to talk about the upcoming TA opportunities. So keep in mind and what we're sharing with you are 
um, things that are coming up fairly quickly. We hope to um, continually update you all and let you know what's available. So um, we know people really like the IDIO conference and having that face-to-face. -face. And as with most things, um, most conferences coming up, that has been put on hold. Um, and we're looking at how we can revision that for the upcoming year. So we're looking at a virtual event in the fall of 2020. We're planning that now. Um, we know that's not the same as coming together. We hope that we can do that soon, but we do wanna offer something around the conference in the fall. Um, as I talked about, we have an emphasis right now on something that's on all of our minds, which is the response to the COVID, um, COVID crisis. So we will be having a webinar coming up in the next month, focused for Part C data managers, um, and we'll be reaching out to you about that. We also are working on um, documenting your TA date, your data processes TA. So this was a toolkit that was started with IDC. We are updating that for use with Part C and um, taking that work on to continue it. We know that that was something that states really value. Um, we'll have a series of SF evaluation webinars and cross-state work that we'll do. And we're gonna work on an SPP APR 101, what do you need to know? Because we know, um, as Meredith stated at the beginning, we have a lot of new people. And um, having something like this available would be very helpful. Those of you who have been around a long time and you might not have to admit this, but you may remember um, the APR boot camps that were done. This is something similar to that, only updated and new. So those are some of the upcoming TA opportunities. As we've talked about, we'll con continue to focus on individual state TA, um, providing those opportunities through cross-state cohort work um, and being responsive to your data, sorry, your data needs. You just have to let us know and we hope that you'll call us. So we wanna move on and talk about, what's the next slide? Oh, evaluation. Of course, we have to evaluate everything we do, right, to see how we can improve it. Thank you, Grace. Um, um, as part of our ongoing processes for ensuring that we're providing high quality TA, we rely on the participants of our TA events to respond to short surveys that tell us about their experience with the technical assistance. We use the responses from these surveys to revise the technology that we're using to identify needed content um, and to consider our virtual engagement and how the, our virtual engagement processes could be improved. Um, the, the reason we bring it up here is to beg for you to please respond to the evaluation when you get it after the um, after this webinar, you should receive an email um, tomorrow with that information in it. Um, it's really critical to our planning as we move forward. Um, and I promise you, we, we analyze it, we read through it, and we take it very seriously. So please do respond to the evaluation. Next slide. Now we'd like to open it up for um, questions. Yeah, you can put those questions in the chat box. Um, and there was a question from Alice earlier on asking, will the entire framework be revised or just the data tabs? Um, and I, I responded briefly that the systems framework is also being revised by ECTA, but um, I don't know if someone who's engaged in that process would wanna provide any more information. And the ECTA or the DAISY process? I think this question was about the EC, it, oh. the entire framework, so beyond the data yeah. framework. So this is Grace, and other people can jump in. The ECTA, the, the entire framework is being revised. Um, we are streamlining and tightening it um, based on what we've learned over the last several years to make it more user-friendly and based on what we've learned. Other people can jump in. This is Kathy, and I, I would just add, Grace, yeah, and, and 
as in the previous, um, is in the original development, DAISY is working closely with ECTA to coordinate the revisions. So mm -hmm. they, they'll speak to one another, they'll be compatible. They're, um, DAISY, the, the data system framework will continue to be a component of the ECTA framework. We do want to remind people to um, go to the website after this one, fill out the evaluation, but also go to the website and we will have a form there where you can sign up for the various activities that we share if you're not already signed up. We might also add that we are very open um, to ideas about yeah. resources that you think you need or um, events. Uh, activities, ways um, to meet your needs in other ways than individualized um, TA. We're, of course, always here for that. We have a couple things, as Grace pointed out in our pipeline, um, that will involve either a specialized kind of individualized TA or something that includes cross-state and an individual component like the topic cohorts. Um, but we are always open to all your great ideas. So please don't hesitate to reach out to, to any of us um, with something that you see as, as a need for your state and, and or other states. And I know that we've opened this up for questions, but if you have particular data needs, this would be a good time to share them as well. Grace, how long do we want to sit here in silence before we move on? Oh, um, I guess <laughs> this is Donna. Um, this is Donna. One of the things I think that, that, that actually the silence um, it, it, uh, speaks to is we're trying to learn how to do more the virtual kinds of things that are more interactive because we know, like when we were showing you the conference, we know that that was our high. That was our highest rated event. And our topic cohorts that we had involved both bringing states together, small meetings that were working meetings, as well as then individual work and on-site work. And, you know, our, our TA providers are, you know, skillful and, but they're also social. And I'm a, a big social animal and I miss all those in-person um, kinds of events and we're we're trying to figure out and learn ways to make these virtual kinds of um, events and, and TA more interactive because we know everybody learns from each other and it's it's a different it's a different format and it, it takes certain kinds of um, skills and strategies to be to try to achieve that in-person quality, some of the in-person qualities, I'd say. And I think just, this is Kathy, just to follow up on that. I mean, unfortunately, none of us know when we are ever, when we are going <laughs> to be able to meet face-to-face -face yeah. again. Um, we know we value it so much, we all get so much out of it, um, but the, the times are such that it's just, it's really, it's impossible to plan, um, which is the hard part um, for a face-to-face -face meeting. We just don't know. So we're gonna be creative yeah. and we're gonna do things in a yeah. different way. We're gonna try to achieve the same objectives um, remotely. Yeah. We're all learning how to move yeah. forward in this new environment, right? Like, what does it look like? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're looking at things like there's a lot of tools where you can interact in right on the screen. There's ways that you can have breakout rooms for discussion, but, you know, facilitated discussions, break into groups, come back. The, a lot of the, a lot of the kind of things we do in person, but we'll see how we're, we're trying to learn how to do that. Yeah. And so I imagine to, all you and your mm -hmm. states are having this, some of the same issues. 
So um, do we want to go to the next slide? And I know people aren't really talking on the um, screen, but as my emails pop up on my other screen, I'm seeing that some of you are already asking how you can get additional information or TA. So we're really glad to see that and looking forward to working with you all. Um, so we have, this is our website in case you haven't been to it, although most people have said that they are, um, that they are familiar with our work. Um, and I do see a couple questions. So if somebody wants to look at those questions, we can answer them and I'll finish with what I'm saying. So if you don't know where to start with TA, as we have in the past, each state has a TA liaison. You can reach out to them with your TA needs and then we will um, be responsive and reach out to you. Um, we also, um, as Kathy said, you can contact any of the TA centers or any person that you know um, to get TA. And somebody, if you would mute your, um, okay, so I know that we have questions. I saw a couple questions pop up. What are the questions? Apparently the secret trick is to move on and then you'll get some <laughs> questions. So it worked. The first question is, you mentioned a resource for, for a new Part C coordinator called the Navigator. Is that available for others? Is it a kind of onboarding document? Um, so there are people on, on the call who are familiar with that. Navi it's called Navigate. And as we um, identify a new Part C coordinator, there is outreach that is done to invite them to a call to give them information about the various TA centers and how they can support them in their work. Um, we can certainly provide that information to anyone who's interested, but it's a particular outreach um, to the Part C and 619 coordinators to give them a little bit of orientation about what supports there are for their role in particular. So it's a combination of a document and a service together. Mm -hmm. There's a, a website we can provide. I don't know if that website is open. I'll we'll have to check on that. The yeah, second, support. Oh, the second question is, will, will there be a time when in-person events occur again, like IDIO conference, um, that there will be financial support for travel for state participants? Yeah. This, this is Kathy, and, and we've certainly, um, we are having that conversation very definitely because we know that the COVID situation has changed state budget um, issues rather substantially, so we hear. Um, and so when we actually get to meet in person again for the, the next um, IDIO, um, we are going to give some serious consideration to figuring out ways to support state state attendance. We are hoping for 2022, right? Yeah, we're Our hoping. next plan. <laughs> We've already talked about, we know face to face, we're really hoping for that on our next, um, yeah, next time that we meet. Yeah, and that would have been our next time. So stay tuned. Any Maybe other we questions? should go forward another slide so we can before, get some more before questions. Before you go off of that, I, <laughs> I did want to let people know we are redoing the website. So you will be some see some changes. All the information will be there and be available to you. Um, but it's going to have a, a, mm. a new look and feel. Yeah. And we hear that Michigan is beautiful in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> Put in a pitch for your state, your state here. <laughs> So um, after this call, there will be a link on the front page of the website for the slides from this presentation and also the recording. Thank you, Renee. So if there are any other questions um, or information you would like to share with us, that is our um, call for today. We are very excited to continue the work and looking forward to working with everybody. Um, please reach out uh, if you have any data needs at all. We're happy to help. Somebody said Grand Rapids or Lansing. 
I just popped away. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. It was very nice nice to see all your faces. Uh, we look forward to more conversations with you. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for your questions. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.